good friend and an amazing supporter of PDC Live UK since it started. Um, she's been doing PDC for like close to 10 years now. So this is someone who's an amazing expert. 11, 11 years, <laughs> there we go. Um, and yeah, she's going to try and get us to fall back in love with Broad Match. So let's see how she does that. <laughs> Um, yeah, my, my name is Petya. Um, thanks so much for coming here. It's just lovely to see a room full of friends. Um, I know I refer to you as friends. I'm a bit like an email newsletter. You have to unsubscribe but by default. <laughs> um, and it's Black Friday week. Um, it's Black Friday week, so you're the most committed, just being here. <laughs> I know it's a busy period. Um, but what I'm going to try to do is, um, I'm going to spend the next 20 minutes talking about Broadmart. Hopefully, you know, OK, let's do that. Can I, <laughs> can I have a show of hands first, ones that are not using Broadmart at all right now? No. Oh. Hello. I don't know what it is, to be honest. <laughs> 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 Let's try this again. Anyone who knows what Broad Match is, but it's not using it. <laughs> okay. um, how many of you are using it uh, tentatively, just a little bit? Yeah. Just a little bit? Yeah. Uh, that's about a third. Okay. Um, and then I, I assume the rest are using it. Um, Across most of their work? Yeah. Yeah? There's a middle ground there, So there, there's quite a few people that refuse to respond, but. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully by the end of this, you'll, have, you'll be just a little bit in love with it, like a little crush, not the major thing, but. Yeah, um, so a, a little bit about myself. Um, my name is Petya, and my surname, uh, don't worry if you can't pronounce it, I can't do it either. So, I can't. <laughs> so it's, it's fine. Um, don't try to remember it or type it, because it might break your fingers, but you can scan this. Um, and uh, add me on LinkedIn, I spend a lot of time on LinkedIn. Um, that's how we met. Um, I've been in paint search uh, for just, just about 11 years now. I used to work in the agency. Uh, then I um, then I became freelance by accident. Um, I've worked in all sorts of clients and accounts, e-commerce, lead generation, um, some charity accounts. Um, so done a bit of all. Um, in my personal time, I obsess about coffee and I spend a lot of time on LinkedIn. So let's connect. Um, I let some. Um, Let's start talking about Broadmatch. So, without a doubt, this is the most, they, there's no other topic in pay search right now that divides a room like that. They, that, that is for sure. Um, but recently, um, the response is, is getting more and more positive. Um, and there was a white, white paper published by Brain Labs recently, and I really encourage you to find it and read it. Um, just Google a brain labs review of Broadmatch. Um, they did some testing, um, and they their findings more or less supported what Google um, promising about Broadmatch. It's a really, really interesting read. So find it read if you're interested in that topic. But the the bit I picked there is they called it a fundamental component of your search activity. So what's a fundamental? It's the base. It's the base. So you have to have it to have anything else. I mean, a lot of you will disagree, but that, that's where things are going, and I, I'm going to um, touch on that later on. What Google was saying about Broadmatch, um, obviously they're pushing hard about it, and I think that because they're pushing so hard, the response is mixed. Um, but they published another white paper. Um, again, search for it. Very interesting. And even though, even if you're not going to be doing a lot of work Broadmatch, it's still very interesting to read about how do we do the matching signals and etc. It's very interesting read. 
you know, that this is more about me, but unlock the power of search, um, finding reading, very interesting read. In that white paper, um, they say that the average conversion increase at a similar CPA is 35% across the tests. Um, I think the Brain Labs white paper found an average of 30, so pretty close. And the average conversion value increase at a similar level as 20%. Um, and I think personally from my case, of course they've been a mix, mixed bag, but I, I've found similar results. Um, so what is broad match, I'm not going to go into what is broad match, we've got a room full of um, experienced people here, but again, lots of people disagree, but it's a much more effective product than what it used to be. I remember when I started in um, PPC in my first year, that the ultimate mistake was to add a keyword as broad match, by mistake, no one used to do intentionally back then, <laughs> and you get in trouble, I, I've been there a few times. Um, it's not what it is. Um, what, and why it's not what it is, it used to match on the keyword and um, by the content of the keywords to expand broad match. Now it's working by intent and that's what the Google white paper is talking about and going into a lot of detail how they've changed the product. But um, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a different product than what it used to be. That's, that's my... Um, that's my third point. I think they, they made a mistake calling it broad match. When they reintroduced it, I mean, given the to Google, um, we're welcome, but they, I think it was a mistake calling it broad match because there was all the negative connotations from before. Um, they should have called it, I don't know, just loose match, smart match, flexible <laughs> match, something, not broad match, because everyone hated broad match. <laughs> and a lot of people still do. Um, and without a doubt, when we test it, we have to think about it as a, it, it's a tool. So without a doubt, you can use it wrongly. Is it, you can give me, you can give me a power drill, ask me to put a picture, I can do a very good job, I can give you a pretty wall, I can use it um, not, not, not that well, and I can make a mess of it. I am a well-known DIY queen, so I, I do a good job with the power drill, but yeah, just be careful how you use it, just as any other tool. Um, where, I, where I use it, why I use it. Um, at the start, it was more about finding new keywords, finding opportunities. Um, not so much these days. Um, it's just changed how I use it, but it, it, the, the application of it more in my practice now is for growth. Um, if you reach with, with exact and phrase, you inevitably reach that sort of plateau and you can't get more of it at that cost. And that's where really broad match comes into play and deliver that extra reach and uh, growth. Um, finding new keywords, keyword opportunities are still, you know, still relevant. You, you still use it for that. Um, it, just going beyond what keyword planner will produce as keyword ideas, or what can I, I remember I used to like sit down and think, okay, what this product, what keyword, what would I search if I need that product? Don't need to do that, don't need to do that much these days. You can use very much for that. You just put your premium keyword, your top hero keywords, and you'll find ideas. Um, lastly, They've been promising voice and image search becoming this really big thing for years now. Uh, we've heard a lot about it, but you probably will eventually. Um, and this sort of intent-based search matches that trend towards voice searches or, or image search. Um, how to implement broad match. Um, my favourite one, if you follow me, I, I love talking about the upgrade thing. Again, I think another poor choice of words, because um, upgrade is that, it, it's a positive word, but I, I've got, I personally have that negative, you know, when you get upgrade, you actually get a new phone contract, but you pay more for the same amount of data. This is the upgrade. When you get upgrade, you sort of tripped into it. That's what happening a little bit with um, upgrading in a recommendation stack with Broadmatch. Upgrade was on the right words, and also obviously upgrading by deleting your existing keywords 
uh, I don't know how the accountant came up with this. It's, it's too hard. They're pushing too hard. So, but that, that's one way. Um, the the next pos possible testing scenario is to set up an experiment. I love experiments. So setting um, setting up a campaign draft, um, splitting the traffic. Um, convert all your, all your keywords in the test campaign to broad margins and testing this way. This is one possible way. It's very controlled because you're testing simultaneously. Um, a broad match only campaign, that when I started testing broad match at the start, that, that's what I was doing personally. Um, setting up a broad match only campaign, um, taking my top exact match keywords and testing them in a broad match only campaign and then creating a negative keyword list, applying it to that campaign. But realistically, that's very controlled. It's, it's safe, I guess, but it's not it's not really a test because you're blocking out the, the exact matches for that broad match keyword, so it's not it's not an A B test, not actual test. Um, and uh, lastly how you can try and expand your keywords list with Broad match is taking your um, exact match keywords and creating a copy, uploading broad match keywords, or maybe you can use engrams, a lot of engrams, you can find ideas from that and create um, broad match keywords. Um, these these screenshots um, is a lot, it's a little busy, but if you find that um, Google white paper I mentioned earlier, it's it's there and it's. Um, this is about how broad match has evolved and how it compares to exact and phrase. And as we can see, what's really interesting is it takes a signal from the keyword, but now it takes signal from the landing page content. Um, it takes signals from the other keywords in our group, previous searches, predictive performance location. Um, so it's multiple signals um, that broad match is taking information from. But at the same time, what they've changed is they they make they made it a little bit stricter. Whereas if you have um, if you have a keyword sushi delivery and food delivery previously, they'll match to the keyword with highest rank. But now they are matching to the keyword with the, the closest key, keyword. So if your search is sushi delivery near me, they will match to the sushi delivery as opposed to food delivery, even though food delivery is rank is higher. So because of broad match now taking all these additional signals, um, it is now more important what we do beyond choosing keywords. So I think as, as PVC managers we're going to get more involved in landing pages and what content is on the landing pages, what keywords are included. Um, we'll have to do more around keywords, um, sorry, audiences. Um, so how audiences are set up, how they're dated, it will become more important than it used to. Again, because of the signal of other keywords in the ad group for broad match, um, we'll have to think a bit more how ad groups, are, um, how keywords are grouped in um, ad groups, like ad group theming. Um, uh, um, what what Google is saying in that white paper is one thing that I personally don't agree here, is there is no there is no gain from having the multiple phrase matches. Although I personally still uh, I do add the broad matches, but I do keep the phrase and match, um, which is kind of, is comforting to see what the performance is for exact match. Um, for reporting, it's more visual and what, what um, performances uh, performances on exact and phrase. Um, also, um, when when Google say, well, they, uh, broad match is taking signals from other keywords in the ad group, surely if there's an exact match keyword in that ad group, that's a strong signal. That's a, that's a signal. That's what I want to match to exactly. Um, and obviously, with PMAX, another hot topic, um, currently, uh, exact match keywords supersede PMAX, so it's a way to not give you all to be mad. Um, brand control. This is this is really interesting. This wasn't in the original version of the slides. Um, I added this morning because 
I had um, I had a call with the Google rep and they were telling me about this. I don't know why they were telling me because they didn't say that I can't run until 2023. So it's a beta. Um, but what this is showing is the improvements to Broadmatch, but it's also a strong push towards it. But soon we'll be able to switch the campaigns to using Broadmatch only. Um, but to use this, so this is if, if you have broad match um, keywords that include the brand name, um, and then you opt in for brand keyword control, brand control, they will only match this to that particular brand. So it only match searches to that particular brand, uh, which is interesting because that's one one of the common complaints about broad matches. It's a little broad, especially with brands. Um, so that's interesting, but to, to use that, then you need to opt into broad match only campaign setting. Um, which keywords to use it with? Um, so when I was creating this slide, uh, I was, my plan was to say don't use it with brands. I still think so, so brand, brand campaign is, is supposed to be just brand by its nature, but um, with the brand control option for broad match, maybe we will start using it with broad, maybe we will start testing. It just, it just feels that's where it's going. So that first one maybe I'll take back, but for the time being, I personally don't use it with brand keywords. Um, generic keywords, um, you know, by all means, that's the main play field, shall we say, um, competitor keywords, uh, possibly, finding new opportunities, possibly, all of them, yes, maybe. Um, that's another one of my favorite topics. Yeah. What? Auto play recommendations, I love them. Um, I love to talk about, uh, talk about auto apply on LinkedIn. We're not friends with auto apply. Um, it, often they get you to turn you on. That sometimes they call clients and told them about this amazing opportunity, and then go to an internal auto plan. You find out too late. Um, it's not only going to apply um, broad match keywords. It will delete, not pause, delete your exact match and broad match keywords. Wow. So check, check your auto apply. Um, auto apply and myself are not friends, but this is important. Um, who uses broad match? Um, s s sometimes I see discussions about possibly broad match being more suitable to e-com or B2C. Um, in my personal experience, there is just some <coughs> niches, some industries, some keyword themes maybe. It just works better for, maybe algorithms learn a bit better for some. Uh, for others, not matching so well. I'll show you some examples later on. Um, but I don't personally think it's a B2C or B2B thing. It just tends to vary, but I've seen it work for B2B. Um, yeah, as I say, what, it tends to work better for some than others. Um, some matching is quite good, but for some industries, again, I'll show an example. In my experience, it hasn't been that uh, great so far, but. It, they are they're, um, developing the product, so possibly in the future. Um, definitely bigger counts and smaller. Uh, uh, that's a no-brainer. It's, it's, it, it, it's an algorithm. It needs the data. It needs a bigger count. Um, that, or bigger counts have bigger budgets, so you can play more with this. So again, uh, bigger counts tend to benefit more from it. Um, it's, I, I had a bit of a uh, situation with this. Impression share. Because broad match is, you know, broad, um, the possibility of matching is so much bigger, um, and that's how impression shares calculated the, the possibility of matching to the match to the impressions you actually receive. So, <laughs> impression share with broad match is really low. It's depressingly low sometimes. So, if your clients uh, KPI something that they're looking at is impression share, uh, trade carefully with broad match. It's going to be low. Um, it, it, it just always is. Also with clients who are open to test, so I found that they should be aware that you're doing it, they, uh, they expect it possibly uh, be being something 
in the worst case scenario, not working or needing, needing tweaks, but it, clients were aware of it and open to this. Um, there's a lot of gifts in this presentation. I would say, she said, I love a gift. Yeah. When, when she's saying there's some guidelines, she said, you must include some uh, gifts and emojis. People love it. So if you're not, there is not a slide with that one. I, I, I've got all out. So um, where maybe a broad match is more likely to not work? New accounts. Uh, Google actually saying that works with new accounts. But, but how? You know, it's, it's, it's taking all those signals, your landing page, your other keywords, your previous searches. If, if it's a new account, it doesn't have them. I don't know. Is it learning from the uh, searches across the whole network? Perhaps, but I haven't had success with new accounts in broad much. Um, no conversion tracking or poor conversion tracking. Again, I don't know very naive, there's no conversion tracking. I don't even need to explain that. Or if conversion tracking is flawed uh, for whatever reason, uh, again, it it's, has to be paired with a smart um, smart bidding. And if conversion tracking is uh, not optimal, mm, no, <laughs> it's not going to work. Um, if you have strict budgets for specific terms, again, perhaps. It, 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 for, for many diff different reasons, it's better to stick with the stricter match types. But if the budget can be expanded, to it, then that's um, um, that gives room for testing. And then regulate the niches. So if you work in pharma or um, some uh, financial services, you have to be careful, especially with pharma, and how broad matches match into work. You just have to be careful. It's not. It's not impossible. Just have to be a lot more careful with it. Um, there's something missing here. Um, what what you need to um, to start testing uh, again that that relates to the previous topic. New accounts, maybe not. If you have an account that you feel the learning is sufficient, and I, I had a discussion recently with someone, what is sufficient learning? Um, so they asked me, what do you think is sufficient learning? Some send me a message on LinkedIn because they saw I'm going to be talking for, about broad match. Uh, I'm like, this is going to sound really unprofessional, but I go by gut feeling. Now, honestly, you will know your account and you'll know what's sufficient. You, if you feel comfortable, you feel sufficient. Um, I asked, um, I, I had a call yesterday with the Google rep. They said it was zero conversions for target CPA. So this is the official Google stance zero conversions for target CPA, or 15 for target ROAS. Uh, so that's what they're saying. I, I, I don't think that's sufficient. But perhaps if someone tests you with that little conversions or no conversions, please send me a message and let me know how it worked out. Um, uh, uh, am I over? No? <laughs> um, smart bidding, another no-brainer, it, 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 because it's, be, it's is setting your bit by the intent of the keywords, or suppose the intent. Uh, it doesn't make sense that you use broad match and manual bit. So you can't be setting the same bit for, you shouldn't be setting the same bit for all the different possible intents in searches that match into broad match. So, uh, you know, that, that's um, for sure that's important. Accounts that are using smart bidding. Um, because of the signals taken from other keywords in the ad group and from landing pages. Accounts with good ad group themes and good structure, that those are things will benefit. Responsive search ads, again, that's um, how, how Google matches what headlines and what ads are going to be shown with the different searches that match to broad match. Um, that, that's important. Uh, when, when I say strength here, I don't mean that strength with the little, you know, if you're confident in your ad copy, I don't know that little toggle with the, what do you call it, where Google says it's strong. Uh, do you think that actually, uh, it's just a nice, it's a bit vanity thing, I think, I don't know if that makes for a strong ad copy. I found that if you need to pin, you have to pin three headlines and then it makes it good, and uh, you can trick the system. That when I say strengths, what ad copy that you're confident that it's got variety in it, um, 
Um, conversion tracking, again, so important, but uh, it only is a basic, but you see so many accounts with either poor, missing, a conversion tracking, or poor, or duplicate, that's my favorite one, when you have two goals t measuring the same one, and you're delivering these great results. Um, and um, data driven attribution, again, self-explanatory. Oh, now my title shows. Um, so, why, why we resist sometimes to test it? It's good, that's a good one. Yeah, it's good. It's good, isn't it? Thanks, how was that? Thank you. Um, concerns about roadmaps, brand safety, what, what, is, um, what searches is my brand going to show? Is it safe? No, we haven't got enough control for it. That's a very, very valid point. Um, lack of transparency, what I mean is, you, I wish there was a tool that shows you a preview of what is, what are the possibility that, that you put a broad match keyword in, it shows you, this is possibly what you're going to show for. Maybe not exclusive 100% preview, but some sort of, you don't know until you start spending on it. But that's true for a lot of Google stuff, you know, you need to spend first and then you find out. Um, so you don't know, bit, bit caps, you can't, you can't say, that, but if there was an option, I've got broad exactly phrasing that campaign, but for broad, I only pay X amount per click. Anything else, Google, you know, just use my tag CPA. There's no such option, obviously that's a concern. Ways to spend, that's my favorite complaint about broad match. Why is my favorite? Because cause that implies that exact match is not wasting spend. And that's not true. Exact much will waste spent because I search for um, cheap laptops for exact much and I've got that keyword, but I might not be ready to buy or I might be actually trying to sell the laptop. Or you don't know, you could have an exact match to exact much keyword and still be a waste of spend. It, that, that, I don't subscribe to that because all matches waste spent and that's unfortunately that's the nature of Google Ads. There will be um, ways to spend, always. Um, focusing on wrong metrics. Um, what I mean here is with broad, broad match, by the nature of it, again, by the possibilities of matching to different searches, your click through will be low. Uh, your impression share will be low. Um, CBC will be, will have a little play around. <laughs> Um, if, if these are things that you know, if these are things that you measure, you'll be disappointed, or at least initially. Um, and again, by by the nature of the setup, you have broad match and target CP, the only metric you sh Google saying that I sort of agree that you should be tracking this. is broad match delivering leads at my target CP, yes or no? You know, if my click through rate is um you know, five times lower, it, who cares, really? If it's delivering the end goal, unless your client really is looking at that uh, metrics, then um, that's a whole other story. Um, the non-English um, searches, non-English accounts, um, I, I really have not ever worked on one, <laughs> but I didn't find broad much to be good at matching to non-English uh, searches. So for those markets, the, the, the tool hasn't evolved yet, I think, just as well as it has for English searches. Um, um, should you be using broad match if you're using any of these other tools? Um, yes. <laughs> so bro you can still use broad match and have a performance max um, campaign. You just you just sort of let them lose and let them do their things at, at your target. Um, yes, again, there's lack of transparency, but you, you can use both. Um, dynamic search ads, uh, yes, because that, that that is a tool that is dynamic search ads is designed to match to your page content more than keyword. Pretty much keyword is taking signals from from multiple uh, sources, so. They're not direct competition as such. 
non-broad match, don't tell Google, but they say you shouldn't be using them all. I mean, you can still have them all. I'll show, again, I'll show some examples of having all three matches later on. Um, standard shopping and broad match, that's my favorite uh, thing I do now. Um, standard shopping, doing a lot of it with some, we've been talking about some concerns with PMAX. Maybe if one day I'm invited again, I'll do falling back in love with standard shopping, because I am doing a bit more with it. What's great about standard shopping, you get in search terms, you get in search terms for keywords, you can filter your stuff, you know, search terms for, um, that convert, and then you can use them as broad match. So you can do that team play between standard shopping and broad match for e-com accounts. I, I, I think it's working really well. Um, going to the interest of it, that, that's what I love about them. Oh, okay. <laughs> the rain and the, oh. Um, lots of successful examples. This client is a client in the financial services industry. We started um, in April with a broad match only campaign, so separate campaign, and that was um, that was testing broad match keywords with negative in phrase in a keyword um, excluded from that campaign. We did see an uplift in conversions. Blue, yeah. So conversions. <laughs> did uh, increase with that approach. And because we saw that, and we got confidence in it, then in June, at the beginning of June, we included broad match keywords in the existing campaigns. I'm oh, sorry. Where the um, exact and phrase match keywords were, and that's where we saw a really um, good, significant increase in conversions. Interestingly, and improving the ROAS as well, um, really good test in June is not a particularly strong month for this um, industry, so it wasn't, that wasn't due to seasonality. Um, a bit more, that's um, same client. It, it, interestingly, it looked at the, um, so that's from May to June when we expanded broad match into the main campaigns. The exact match percentage of ad spent remains similar, 44-45%. Broad match increase at the expense of freeze match, but um, the, the, the increase in search rate and clicks was significant. Impressions, conversions, and even ROAS improved, which was uh, great to see. Um, this is different client, the home services industry, two different clients. These, uh, unfortunately, I had to. Um, black it out, but it's the same keyword in the three match types. So here's a bit of a mixed bag. Here, uh, with this client, broad match really sort of took over the, the conversion volume. It, it improved cost per conversion. Um, really significant, significantly bigger click volume. Here it was a bit more balanced, but again, similar um, CPA, overall good results. Happy days for these clients, good taste. Um, then we, we have the bad examples as well. Um, this one was actually an accident. This is an auto apply accident. Um, client turned on auto apply in advance of Google. Then all keywords were upgraded to broad match. The, the matching was horrendous. So. They, they're a coach by a company, you can hire a coach by, by the day, but if you look at the searches, <laughs> it's a short of horrendous, it's Victoria Call Station telephone number. Uh, you know, I, I, I've done a bit of work here, as you can see. The m matching was horrendous. That's why I found that, for me, just there's some keyword themes that it's just still not that good with, Google's still not good with broad matching matching, and this was one example. Um, funny ones, so I, I love that. <laughs> I love I love high use weight searches from broad match over the days. That's one of my favorites. So I feel I feel funny words and I feel the search terms to see about the searches. Um, <laughs> so many years, twenty first years, and I'm not that bad. I didn't have any stats. I didn't have spare time. Think of funny words, feel to yourself, don't they? Um, yeah, I'm finding a point, I'm almost done. Um, match types in 
not going the way. Yes. Let, let's put let's put a, a quiz on when is it 2023 when they're going to go away? They've not gone yet. So better start testing now. <laughs> Do we have questions for her? We'll do questions now. Yes? No? Okay, you can catch her. Yes, we got a question. So, when you believe in Paris and you think road march, phrase march, and whatever else you've heard, have you ever looked at where in the funnel they are? It's the same target audience you get with those match types. Where in the, where in the funnel, in the sales funnel, where the customers are with Pixar? Or where in the customer journey, if you look, at multiple clicks, often it's just the poor speaking or... Oh, God. That is a very good question. I, I, I haven't... No, I haven't noticed it yet. Um, <laughs> sure. I haven't looked at that, and that's a very good point. It could be a good tool to start at that top, top part of it. Um, no. But w when I'm down with the poop surface, I'll try and, I'll try and find that out, and I'll send you a message. Any other questions? Yes, Charlie? Yes. If you had only ever used exactly phrase match, you were scared, and you had to test ball match, how would you test it? Would you create a ball match campaign that was only ball match, or would you use an experiment? Okay, so if you're very scared, which is what I did at the start, I'll start with a broad match only campaign, because you can control the budget, you can hopefully see the results and become confident in getting fans. If you feel a bit wild, go straight into the existing campaign. But, um, for if you're just sort of dipping your toes in, it, probably a broad match only campaign is best. But just keep in mind, it's not perfect test. It's not A/B test. It's not perfect test. It's just good to see what you're going to be matching, so you don't get them Victoria Cross clicks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. I've got a question. Yeah. What's your opinion on phrase match and how do you currently use it in conjunction with exact match and broad match? You know, when we were at uni, we always had that one friend that no one ever knew why, but they were always invited along. Very <laughs> much is like that. You just don't know why, isn't it? But it's always there, so it's too easy. <laughs> <laughs>